though. The uh, breeze has just picked up, so it may be difficult to hear me. Uh, I'm kind of in a place, a place here where I'm not going to be very loud. Hi, Lori. Did you hear me back here? You want to come for a visit? I'm back here in. Uh, I don't know if you're able to see Lori or not. Maybe she's over there. There she is. Oh, I can't reach, but you probably you probably see her right there. Hi, Lori. Uh, you might be able to see Molly over there, just to the left of her running shed. Actually, no, that's Jay. Molly was there, but I don't know where she is now. Anyway, I'm in Lori's back pasture. I'm at the uh, highest point on this farm. Uh, maybe not by much. Kind of at the back of the pasture. Uh, along the stone wall. Which I really enjoy because it's rather see-through. And uh, Lori's pretty uh, curious, so she may even come over to join us. I'll see if I can set this up. Yet again, trying to balance the phone in some relatively helpful and productive way. That's not too bad. So I just came out and I walked the uh, medicine wheel, did a little meditation. Uh, it was a little more um, private, I guess, so didn't share that. Uh, but I come over here to this uh, highest point, uh, uh, certainly that I can survey, but also the highest point on the farm, uh, so far as I'm aware. Uh, haven't checked it with a laser mesa-ometer, uh, I want to say inclinometer, but that wouldn't quite be right. I can see the grand old apple tree in the far distance, I can see uh, Dolly out in the field there. We're here in Jeremiah over sounding out, and Lori's working her way up here. <coughs> So as I sit here on this hillside, uh, the uh, earth seemingly falling away, um, from me, gives you a little hint about sort of archetypal notion of the, the Sadhguru, the Mahaguru, the, the special teacher, sort of at the mountain, you know, the, the highest uh, point of the earth, and, and pilgrims come to that point. So I did my meditation in the medicine wheel, and then I walked to this point in this gentling pilgrimage. So he tried to invest in that pilgrim state. That sort of uh, open, uh, humble, listening, uh, grace imbued state. So that although my you know, walk was 75 yards and uh, it gains an altitude of five feet. Uh, I still had the, the type of practice, although in different scale, but perhaps not to different effect of somebody who might be climbing up in a mountain. Hi, Lori. I see you're coming all the way over, huh? How are you doing? You want to come for a little visit even though it's hard to see me? I'm under uh, the boughs of this oak, and uh, so I'm a little hidden from her, I guess. But she knows my voice, and she's 
She's uh, slowly working her way over grazing. This is a little bit uh, out of the grass. I'm, I'm on the, uh, a bunch of dried leaves in sort of this undergrowth kind of area. So she doesn't quite make it up here very often. Hi, Lori. I'm right here. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. Now I'll let you have a look at her. There she is. There she is. Hi, Miss Lori. That might be a little bit difficult to see because of the, the tree branch. So she's um, in shadow, so it's a little confusing for her, perhaps. But she knows I'm here. Hi, Miss Lori. You can maybe see the back of the barn here as I guess where the lens is pointed where we had our hay delivery this morning. And looking back towards the medicine wheel. Hi, Lori. So, having that pilgrimage, um, I've practiced for a number of years. Uh, practiced the want to say practice. I practice the practice of um, entering into pilgrimage uh, despite the amount of movement where I've done it um, just a step and I've then practiced just a, a partial shift of weight practicing as pilgrimage uh, and uh, working on it as a stillness practice which is a bit brain confusing. So anyway, I came to this higher point in that manner of pilgrimage. And as I sit here, kind of everything I see is beneath me. Uh, of course, I don't mean that uh, in a moralistic sense, just an altitudinous sense. And so I have this feeling of being at the top of substantiality at the top of the earth it doesn't have to be true but I have that sensation and none of the information I get uh, from this presence uh, tells me anything different my brain tells me hey there's still Everest uh, but that's not information from this present moment you know and so I feel that everything that's substantial everything that's yin is beneath the place in which I sit. <clears throat> so, do as a meditation is begin to relate this to the sense of the self and the being that I seem to be, or the being or the vessel that I seem to inhabit. Um, so the, the earth the substantial, the yin aspect um, is all beneath the place in which I am. The uh, physical place, but also the, the place, the place uh, uh, that I'm in now, the state. But the aspect of the self is a physical flesh and bone as well as mind heart, as well as perhaps spirit, or whatever other facets, aspects of this uh, human experience uh, you believe there to be or find there to be. But the flesh and bone, the physical, is analogous to the earth, or the earth is analogous to it. And so in sitting here, my entire experience is that the substantial, the physical, the yin, the earth is all beneath this level. And so I'm trying to access an experience within the self of the flesh and bones being the lowest level.
course that means that I have a more discrete sense of the mind-heart being at a higher level and again not meaning better at all when I say higher and the spirit if that's something that you feel or express or find there to be uh, it's likely to be something that's also yet higher so it's a little bit like something that you might see in a chemistry lab where you put a mixture or an emulsion into a container and then it separates out and the physical settles and the highest stuff rises and then the stuff in the middle um, more or less stays where it is you know, and experiences the other things moving away from center. So I'm seeing if I can feel that with the heart-mind level and really feeling my bones, my flesh settle and really experience them as beneath the state from which I look out, the state into which I breathe, the state of my witness. Hi, Lori. So what I feel is that every breath, every breeze acts to help settle out of solution the different aspects of the self. So the breeze comes, maybe like shaking something over a, a mesh, like a filter, and it helps it filter out. So the breath comes in, or the body shifts or moves, uh, or the, the breath creates a body shape change where the breeze comes and I kind of have a sense that each of those kind of shakes those things loose so that they're free to come out of their suspension. But I'm not entering into a process of wriggling and twisting and squeezing and shaking and vibrating myself. I'm just kind of allowing those to seem to be when they naturally arise, things that uh, loosen um, the the bonds of earth and body, or sorry, the bonds of uh, body and heart, for example, and see if we can let those then separate to their different positions. So we'll take a few breaths. Hi, Lori. When I lose sight of the settledness, the, 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 the humble, low level of the earth, I can open the eyes and all the information is suggestive of and reinforcing of that. This isn't really a practice of letting things float. It's really a process of letting things settle out of solution or perhaps settle into a uh, solution with an alternate meaning. visit Lori before we log off. Hi Lori. Hi sweet. How are you doing? Well you came pretty close. How you doing, sweetie? Yeah, you came pretty close. 
You're having a little bite to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's very good to see you. She's on her way. Thank you, sweetie. So, thank you very much from Someday Farm.